Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Detroit Ravens franchise mode here in NHL 21. So in last episode we had free agency and we started up the season simulation and as you can see so far we are 21-14-5 which is not very, I wouldn't say it's a horrible record but it's not very great of a record either. We kind of started the season a little bit slow and we haven't been as good of a defensive team as I would like us to be um, and then also our offense has just not been as good either. Like I don't know if it's because we let go of like a lot of players in the offseason but our offensive uh, abilities seem to have gone down a lot because like guys like Matthews are still playing pretty solid but then you get into guys like Dingman who's only got 26 points in 40 games you got Tucker who's only got 15 points like a lot of guys are under simulating so far this season so I don't know what really the problem is if it's the lack of offense or if it's just this defensive pairing between Larson and Ramja Singh which is a combined minus 18 while other, every other pairing has been pretty solid I would say by comparison so we are going to be making a couple of trades probably at least one trade in this to try and get our team being back to playing pretty good I think we are going to be trading away Ramja Singh because his value is pretty high and he also doesn't fit our top six pairing at all and I don't think he will ever crack the top four if we were to get him there and besides he's not a really good fit for the top four or top two so we will probably be trading him away in this episode to try and bolster our defense a little bit more as well we could play Sean Bertuzzi in that spot if we want to that type of thing. So we do have two comments to go over before we get into the trades and or well we won't I don't know if we maybe we'll make a trade already and then we'll still sim the rest of the season and not why not. So we do have two comments to go over before we get into simulating more and making those trades. So the first one is from WMRA. He says I'd trade Mui and one of the defensemen on that negative pairing for a defenseman that brings harmony to that negative pair. Or for a four that could score 15 to 20 goals per season. The reason Mui should be traded is I feel like he's never been given a shot in the NHL and was always stuck in the minors. If Mui is traded, he could actually have a chance to play in the NHL full time. Now, the thing is, I actually did let go of Mui in the last episode. I didn't even mention that. I forgot to mention that. I let him go after all these years because if we go to our edit the line screen, down in the minors right now, we have for goaltending, we have Stevenson, who's our elite goalie prospect. And we also have Allen, and we also have Alexander Turkov. So, yeah, we don't have uh, Mui anymore. I don't know if Mui even actually signed anywhere. We can actually find out if Mui uh, signed anywhere last uh, off season, because I don't know if he did. He might be still list one of those free agents that never gets signed. And let's see, Mui, and we're gonna go by goalies, and yeah, he's still a free agent, which kind of sucks because this guy deserves a better opportunity, really. Like, I know he kind of had a really bad season with us last year, technically to an extent, but he's a pretty decent goalie for 75. Like, he was in the AHL for a long time. Very respectable player in my book. But yeah, unfortunately, we don't actually have him anymore, but we will probably still try and trade for a defenseman, maybe to fix that top six pairing, or we could put Bertuzzi in instead. Or we might be trading for a forward, which is what Hawks fan recommends. He says, Ram Singh needs to go. You could probably get a high-end top six guy or maybe even a top four guy for him. Also, maybe not a bad idea to get a forward instead and try and get your scoring up. Only appealing players I saw really were Maximov on LA and Harrison on Vegas. He says he also noticed that there was a guy with 40 goals in 39 games when I was looking at their stats. So I was telling him that the funny thing is actually when I went to find trade, they, uh, there was actually trade offers that were sending us Harrison like he was mentioning and there was also one that was actually offering us Maximov so we might bring in one of the two of those guys. Uh, like the trade finder said, either we do Ramja Singh for Harrison and Kajovic, or we do Ramja Singh straight up for Maximov. Now, the only problem with trading for these guys is the uh, cap. Like, because the team right now is right up against the cap, and yeah, we have five million dollars in cap space. So the only problem is we're gonna have to get these computers to retain salaries, and that's not a great thing. Well, actually, it is a good thing, but we'll have to get them to retain salary, which means we're going to have to give up some picks in order to get them to retain salary. So we're going to try and trade, I think, for Maximov. I'll show you guys Brett Harrison as well quickly. But uh, Brett Harrison, he's a, a centerman, but uh, the only problem with Brett Harrison is he signed for like three years. 
Actually, he's not on Vegas anymore. Where the heck did he go? Was he on Vegas? I know I found him before. But uh, anyways, though, he signed for like three years, which is a very long time. And, and he's making like $6 million, I think it was. And that's like a little bit too... Well, it's not steep, I would say, but it's for too long. It has way longer term than I really want to give him. Um, but as you can see here, we could get Maximov two years at 7.495 which is a decent contract we could get, probably get like him uh, on retained salary which means maybe we could get him down to like one more season technically after this at like four million dollars or something which would be probably much more affordable um but then brett harrison yeah he signed for three years at 6.925 and then we'd also have to take on kajvik for the season as well so we're technically getting eight million dollars more in caps uh, cap hit which i don't really like so we're not going to do any of those ones there was also like lundestrom who i think we had at one point i could be completely wrong with that but yeah there was all those offers there was a third and a fourth we could have got now one of the ones that was really intriguing was this hudson bowl one i think his name's hudson uh, he was making 8.35 for three years. Now, this guy is an 80 overall elite forward. His ice time went down way a lot, so he's, like, losing morale. So he's actually a lot higher of an overall than that. But uh, the only thing is with his cap space, or cap hit, making 8.35 for three years is it's going to screw up, like, who we bring back in the off season. Like, we'd have to probably let go of Stewart because of that. So I think we will try and get Maximov instead to try and help out our offense a bit. And I think we'll play Bertuzzi in the lineup, which means we might need to find some sort of depth defenseman at the deadline, um, just in case there's injury problems. So, we are going to see if they could retain some cap, which will go 50% right away, just because I want to see well, if I could actually get them to retain like half the salary, because it would be nice to not have to pay them too much. <laughs> oh wait, actually we can't go that far. We could go to like maybe 40%. So 3.025 retained would mean we are going to be paying them like four, just over $4 million, I think. But let's go to here, and we're going to have to throw in a draft pick for them to retain it, which means we don't have a third round pick, which kind of sucks, but I could trade the third rounder for next year. So yeah, that might work. I'm just seeing in a third for next year, and then they retain. Let me see if I can get this to 50%. Because if I could get this to 50%, that'd be nice. 3.7. Yeah, we'd be yeah, paying him not that much at all. Like, we'd be paying him like 3 point something, I think. I can't do math right now. It's in the morning. So, let's see if this goes through. And that is rejected. They're not comfortable retaining that amount in the salary. What if I threw in another pick into this deal? Like, what if I threw in a fourth rounder for next year as well? rejected so they don't want to retain that much salary so we'll try and talk it down by five percent each time and see if they would do it so let's try 45 percent are you guys okay with that still not willing to accept this deal how about 40 percent because i really need to get somebody on a budget friendly contract because i don't want to be letting go of somebody like Stewart in the off season 40 percent and that is still rejected we might have to try and give up a second rounder if they want to actually do this. 35%. Let's see, guys, is that good? Still rejected, my god. Hmm. I've never tried to actually play with the retainer, uh, retained salary type of thing. 30%? Is that going to work? Nope. Hmm. 25% would put this at how much money that we'd owe him. We'd be still paying him like six million almost, which is a decent amount of money, but we could try that. Still rejected. Hmm. We might have to give up a second for next year, but I will try and raise this back up again because we do need, like I said, some more offense like Cox fam is mentioning. Let's try and get this up to 40%. I'm not giving up our first rounder. 40% rejected. Damn, it's hard to get computers to retain salary in this game. 35%, come on. My god, we might not be able to get Maximov. Like, I really would like to get him, but it's just to cap it. 
which means we might have to figure out some other trade for Ram to Singh. Still rejected. Would you go down to 25%? How about this? Rejected. Still not enough for you. Hmm. How about if I go down to 20%? Like, if we could at least retain some, it would be good. And that's still rejected. Man, they don't want to retain anything. Hmm. I guess they know it's a bad contract. So we could always try that Brett Harrison one with Vegas. The only thing is Brett Harrison's a centerman, and we don't really need centers. We could play him on the wing or somebody else on the wing. So it's not the end of the world, but um, we'll try Brett Harrison. Actually, we'll try getting Brett Harrison. Yeah, we'll retain his salary to 50% as well even though he is we well, guess he's signed for three years or two more seasons technically after this if we get him on a 50% contract that'd be good um and that makes the values pretty close I don't know we could just try Ram to sing straight up for uh Harrison and at 50% retained which they are rejecting so we will throw in a draft pick if they want it we will throw in our second for next year and see if that works and that is rejected oh man computers do not like retaining salary at all it seems like what if I do a second and a third for next year I know it's a lot to give up but I really would like to get these guys on cheaper contracts and they still say no okay so what I'm finding out is this team, no teams really like to uh, retain salary in this game. It's pretty annoying. So I guess we will have to try Ram Jasing maybe for a defenseman of some sort for that top six pairing that has a better fit, which means we got to look through all these defensemen now. Somebody that's not uh, too low of an overall or not too high of an overall. So if we're looking for like a top four defenseman, and then we could play Savonin on the top six. Uh, we want to find somebody that's like 82 maybe. Sandine is 34, but he's probably getting paid for multiple years. Only one year left. He does actually fit some of our pairings. But I don't know if that makes sense from Calgary's standpoint. Do Calgary even want Ram to sing? No, they don't. But that could work. I just don't know if Rasmus Sandine's actually worth it. Like he, He's a plus 12 this year. He fits our second pairing. Doesn't say he fits our top six. Hmm. I kind of want to find a guy that fits all defensive pairings. So let's see if we can find one of those first. This episode might be a little long just because we're probably going to get the rest of the season done as well in this episode. Uh, actually, let me take a look at these guys. Acker is a plus 24 and he fits defensive pairing one. Hmm. You know what? Mitchell Acker is, seems like a decent option even though he's only one year left. We'll try bring him in, and we will also throw in. Is there any good prospects or something that they want to give up? Not really. Uh, yeah, not really. Hmm. What can we throw into this deal? We need to find out some offense as well at some point, but I don't think there's going to be anything that could help us out right here. Uh, Samuelson's got too much value, probably. Matt Samuelson. I don't even know if the Canes are going to be willing to give up any of these players, but we always could try. Uh, Biron is signed for one year. That's interesting. Hmm. This guy's list is a third line scoring forward. We could always try and bring this guy in. Yeah, you know what? We're going to try and bring in this Biron guy as well. So, Acker and Biron. How is the Canes actually doing this season? They probably don't want to trade all these guys. Like, I mean, Acker and uh, Ram to Singh would make sense. So they do want to give up probably picks. Which means pick-wise, we could just pick up a second round pick in this deal as well. Even though we already have a lot of picks. I don't know if we're going to be actually able to get a second. But we could try and throw in like our third for next year. And then we're just basically moving up a little bit. So Ram to Singh in a third for Acker and a second. That should go through. Yep, and that's accepted. So... We changed up our defensive pairings a little bit, like I could have looked for offense, but I think Acker is going to be a good defensive defenseman to help us out. Um, we are going to have to call him up from the AHL, so there you go. 
and we're going to put him into our top six pairing which means Bertuzzi is still going to be depth but it does give Acker a chance and he actually does give it a little bit of a chemistry boost so that's actually not too bad I like that so hopefully that helps out our team play a little bit better defensively as for offense I don't really know what the problem is like it's probably just the winger depth or something like that so we will probably try and address that at the deadline but for right now I'm just gonna make that one trade because I would like to get a little bit of simulating done so yeah let's see how Acker does with his team and hopefully this team can play a little bit better defensively or even well actually weren't we a good defensive team or no I don't even remember what we were good at if it was good at offense or defense or we weren't good at anything but let's go to February the 1st and like I said, at the deadline, we'll probably try and trade for a good offensive player. We dropped two games in a row. That's not good. Kincaid on waivers. This guy's nothing. Not going to claim him. Come on, boys. There's two wins in a row. There's an OT loss. And I don't really like our play still so far, but there's a couple wins in a row. As Mitchell Tucker is back to full health, which he is already in the lineup. Vancouver, we lose one to nothing. Two more games left this month and we lose them both yikes 26 19 and 7 i mean we're actually in a pretty good spot right now we're eight points above the buffalo sabers who are out of the playoffs and we are six points above the blue jackets who are out of the playoffs so we are kind of fighting for that last playoff spot to an extent but our team is improving it looks like and also bullion's got 51 points in 52 games let's take a look at uh, Acker's stats so far for us after his first month in Detroit, he's a minus 4 in 12 games. Come on, Acker. You're a plus 24 in Carolina. I don't know if it's because Carolina was a good offensive team or what, but I'm hoping that you could keep the puck out of the net a little bit better than that. Let me actually make sure he's on like the penalty kill lines and stuff like that. So we will take out... I'm going to take Biggs off the penalty kill. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to just take Biggs off the penalty kill. Because Biggs is an offensive defenseman doesn't make sense to have two offensive defensemen on the same penalty killing unit so we'll go with something like that but yeah I don't really know what we could do for offense like we're gonna have to find somebody with like one year left like I still would like to get our offense going like if I go back to uh, proposed trade is there any other good like forwards that potentially we could pick up like let's start by overall Asplund's a defenseman. Come on, I just wanted somebody that's decent that could help us out in terms of forwards. Um, Benoit Gro or not Benoit, what's his name? Benoit Olivier. Yeah, that's right. Um, those guys have multiple years left. Connor McDavid with the one year left contract. I did say bringing in Connor McDavid in the offseason would be nice. Because he did fit like our third line. Connor McDavid. What can we get for? What should we try and offer for Connor McDavid? He's got a lot of value. That's the only problem. They do want Acker, who's one of our top six four prospects. Draft pick wise, they do want picks. Okay, so what if I uh, took the Carolina pick that we just got and our own second round pick? Detroit would be over maximum salary cap. We'd be over by how much though? We would have to throw in somebody that's making some decent salary here. So let's take a look at what we could give up because I think Connor McDavid would be maybe a good option to bring that offense into our team. So I'm not giving up any of these centers. Yeah, I'm not giving up any of those centers. Uh, we could give up somebody like Petrovic, maybe. Hmm, Tucker's not been that great, to be honest, but he is signed for three years. I could try throwing in Petrovic to this deal. Hmm. The second seems to be a little bit high. Can I give him a third? So we are going to have to try and throw in uh, Petrovic into this deal, I think. We don't have a third rounder for this year or next year. Hmm. Okay, I guess I could just do to two seconds. And I could see if they could retain a tiny little bit. They probably won't retain anything, even like 10% if I went there. I mean, he's only making, uh, this is only for one year, so it's not the end of the world. So let's see if this goes through. So a second Petrovic and our second round pick for Connor McDavid to help out our offense. That's accepted. Okay. 
So we might give up a little bit too much, but Connor McDavid for one year to help out our offense because he, he's probably the most obvious option to help us at offensively, which means we will move Phil Powell to the wing, and we will put Connor McDavid in if he is in the NHL, which he, I did not start in the NHL. Hopefully we won't be over cap hit still by doing that. Let's just throw in a random player for the team, that being OEL. And we'll go to roster moves. I don't think we'll be over cap with Connor McDavid, right? No, we will be. God damn it. I'm going to have to probably trade away somebody else. Um, can I just send down OEL? No, I cannot. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to trade away somebody. But I don't know who. So we need to trade away somebody that's making like one point something. Which, in that sense, who's making something that I don't want? I don't even know if this is a really good smart moves to do, but we're just trying to figure out something because this team really needs to start winning. Uh, who's making too much money? Hmm. I could get rid of, uh, what is it, Tucker? 1850, that's a little bit expensive. Hmm. Or we could get rid of one of our defensemen, maybe. I don't know. Who's making way too much money? Yeah, I think our team is almost screwed to an extent now. Oh, man, why did I do that? Uh, it's a two-way deal, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think Tucker... Hmm, Tucker's got 20 points now. I'm trying to figure out a way to get McDavid into the lineup. I should have made them retain more money. Hmm, does Hobbs go through waivers? Yeah, he probably does, right? Um, yes, he does. Hmm. Yeah, I think Tucker might be the option that we have to trade away. Which, who wants Tucker? Colorado. I don't really want to get rid of Tucker, but I'm going to have to. Which means our lineup is going to be a little bit weaker in terms of the wings, but we bring in Connor McDavid, and hopefully that helps us out. But, uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to pick up anything other than probably a pick for Tucker, which I don't even... We might be able to get a third rounder. Let's try that. That's accepted. Okay. So, yeah, we turned away Tucker as well. Our team is going through a lot of changes, but it's more because we need to call up Connor McDavid. But I don't know if this is a dumb move to do. To trade for Connor McDavid, we're still over to cap space, apparently. Are you kidding me? I literally just tried to... Oh my god, I screwed over this team a lot. How the heck do I even do this? It was making a lot of money that I don't want. Like, how much would be over by? You gotta take Tucker out of the lineup for now. Throw in a Hillis. It doesn't say we'd be over a cap right now. If I go back from this and go to roster moves, can I call up Connor McDavid or is this game just bugging out? Hmm. Let's see, we could send, uh, if I send Garrison back down, does that work? No, it does not. Oh, it does work back down. Work. Okay, so we had to send down Garrison, but uh, we get Connor McDavid into our lineup. I don't know if our team is going to be really weak because of this. Okay, let me try see if we could try and get these lines back. Oh my god. I don't know if this was a boneheaded decision that I made, so we'll just go substitute in all lines. Try and get that to go a little bit. And then we'll go back to this. We don't have any depth forwards. I don't know if I could call up anybody, though. Like, we might have to call up uh, Aker. Yeah, I think we'll call up Aker and Sedin if we can, or we're just Sedin. Because we don't have any depth forwards now, is the only problem. Can I call up somebody like uh, Sedin? I don't think I can. I want to call up Garrison again, though, but I'd be over the salary cap, which is really annoying. <laughs> can I call up Sedin? No, I will be over salary. How about Acker? Over salary. Okay, so we are pretty much screwed right now for the rest of the season. So we're going to have to run with these lines. 
and we're gonna have to uh, stay up right against the cap for the rest of the year but we do bring in Connor McDavid to help us out offensively so I think that's a good move for the team but uh, yeah I don't know and then Aker playing defense yeah I think that's fine hopefully it is not a dumb move that we just did very risky move we're gonna still get the rest of the season done I not I don't think I'm gonna make any more trades I think we're just gonna get the rest of the season done which might be risky but whatever this team needs to get it going hopefully Connor McDavid is that piece as we win two games in a row and then lose two in a row there's another two game winning streak and Savonin has been injured which means Bertuzzi's gonna come in Oh, I hate injuries, and yeah, we're playing good since Connor McDavid's came in, which is a good thing, because if we aren't, I'm going to be a little bit pissed off, because <laughs> I really need this team to win, and ta uh, trading away Tucker was kind of painful to do, even though he's not that great of a player, at least yet, um, so we're going as a buyer, but we're not going to be buying anything, because we don't have the cap space, unless I wanted to trade some away, somebody away to free up more cap. And then way we could call up Garrison. Which we could do, but I don't think it's worth it to an extent. We'll just go like this and exit the trade deadline. I'm not making trades. I think I could call up Garrison and maybe send down, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, that OEL guy. Because if I could do that, then I would put him in, in the lineup instead. Because I would rather, obviously, Garrison. Let's try if I could do that. Because I need Garrison up here instead. Um, so we'll see if we could send down that OEL guy and call up Garrison, and that works. Okay, so we could find a way to uh, get Garrison back into our lineup, which is good. Because we definitely want the best offense as we can. So that is good. And yeah, we'll go with something like that, I guess. Okay, so our team is set and ready to go. Let's get the rest of the season simmed. Bullion is actually killing it now. He's over point per game. He was under point per game last time we looked, I think. Let's get the rest of the season done. And hopefully this team makes the playoffs, and hopefully Connor McDavid helps us out in the postseason because he's going to be retiring probably at the end of this year. So he's kind of just a rental piece to try and get us that Stanley Cup win. Uh, Koch is back for Grand Rapids, which is good. So we will take out OEL. I don't know why he's playing defense, because he's not a defenseman this one. Come on, boys. Keep winning games. There's a loss to the Islanders. We lose to Columbus. Oh, no. We've lost four in a row, and then we beat Buffalo. Yikes. We're still close to uh, missing the playoffs. We are six points above the Sabres. Yeah, we're in a good spot, I think, almost. But we got to watch out for the Blue Jackets and the Sabres, especially. And then also, I guess, the Bruins to an extent. Come on, boys. We don't have much time left in the season. Just win a couple games in a row, and I will be happy. We go against Washington. We lose. Then we beat Winnipeg. And we beat Montreal. I think we're close to clinching, right? And no, we haven't clinched yet. We have 91 points. 87 points for Sabres as the last playoff team. Jeez. Come on, boys. And just win one more game at least. And I think we should be clinching. And we lose to Philadelphia, which is not good. Did we clinch yet? No, we did not. My God, this is coming down to the wire. Game against the Ottawa Senators. Let's so sim up to this day. And then uh, sim to this next day. And that's another loss. Yikes. But we did clinch a playoff spot, just barely. Because the other team's lost. <laughs> we literally just barely made it into the playoffs. Maybe we're going to be that cheese team that wins the cup then. Who knows. And we lose our last three games of the season. We finish 41-32-9. So not a great record at all. Not a great season at all. But we made the playoffs. So it is what it is. Let's advance today just to get this rest of the season done for the other teams. Now let's take a look at our player stats and team stats for the season. And then we'll take a look at who we're up against in round one. So starting off with our centers, Matthews had 71 points. McDavid had how much points with us? He had 14 points in 30 games. So not as good as he was going with Chicago, but still pretty good, I would say. Considering he was only playing third line minutes with us, we could always try and play him on the power play. That might not be a bad option. Coley Minden, 50 points. Powell, 37. Hobbs, 18. 
De Kaiser had 54, Hillis had 12 and 35, which is actually not that bad for 78. Uh, Wong 11 points, Bullion 77 points and 39 goals, Dingman 57 points, Alexandrov 26 points in his rookie season, Gerson had 17 points in 71 games, not too bad either. And then defensively, 60 points for uh, Tristan Wall, plus 22 on a team that was not very good. Not too bad. 10 points less than last year, but he is getting paid a lot of money. 12.5 for another two seasons. Yikes. Uh, Biggs, 35 points is pretty good. His contract is how far away? Almost one season away from ending. Stewart, 19 points and a plus 21. Continuing to play good defensive hockey, but his contract is up this offseason, so that is a little risky. Uh, Mitchell Acker, since bringing him in, was a minus 9 in 42 games. Yeah, our team, I don't know if our team is like literally capable of uh, being a good team. Maybe they'll actually turn it on in the playoffs, though, because sometimes when you have a really bad te team going into the playoffs, you end up winning games uh, in the playoffs. Savonin, 16 points in 78 games, 7 points for Larson, who was a minus 17. I don't know if Thomas Larson is one of these guys we keep on the team for a while. Like I, I was thinking maybe we should trade him away at some point or let him go this offseason because... This is a very bad season from him, and he actually dropped off because of morale, it looks like. So we might have to try and figure out some more ice time for him. But he is not happy here anymore either. So Gustavo Nickel was pretty good, who we brought in. 30, 25, and 7, a 9, 12 save percentage, and a 2.59 goals against average. But Punovs was not good as a backup. He had an 11, 8, and 3 record with an 8.91 save percentage and a 3.14 goals against average. Let's take a look at the entire league for points. So the best player in the NHL was Ola Olsen with a 105 points. And then Peltier with 103. That Damien Hamilton guy that uh, Hawks fan was mentioning that had the 40 goals in 39 games finishes with 102 points and 70 of them were goals. Jeez. So what a season for this young guy. In his third NHL season picking up 70 goals. He's got 137 career goals in 241 games. Uh, Kari Savonin, 101 points. And same with Tate Buckley had 101 points. Are you kidding me? This guy was horrible for us. And then he goes to Pittsburgh and he's all of a sudden a really good player. Like, how does he go from 29 points? To, well, actually, he's averaging a lot more ice time. But still, how does he go from 29 points to 83 to 80 to 101? My God, everybody leaves us and they all do really good. Hmm. Interesting. How about goals leader? Yep, Hamilton with 70 goals, then Kukin in with 57. A couple 50 goal scorers this year. Interesting. Best plus minus is Hamilton with a plus 56. Him, Raddy, and Cock in Yami are a really good top line in New York. Defensively, the most points, Ryan Merkley with 80 points. Tara Tukin right behind him with 79. Best goaltender this year for wins was the Rangers goalie in Cedric Boyer with 46 wins. He was tied actually with Emmanuel Huberdeau of the Canucks. And look who else was up there, Rohan House. Man, we let go of Rohan House right at the wrong time. Because he's been really good for the last few years. This year was his worst of his three years, I think, or last three years. But he has been very good since being in Anaheim. Um, and then if we go, wait, Isaiah Curtis was the other goalie we just had, right? Yeah, Isaiah Curtis we had a few years ago as well. He's been pretty good too, since he's left us too, right? Uh, Huberto, 914 save percentage is the best for goalies. Best goals against though in the NHL. Gustavo Nickel had the best goals against in the entire NHL. Wow. That is actually really impressive. So I guess we were actually a better defensive team than uh, stats look like. It's just our offense couldn't get it done. Huh. Interesting. Didn't expect to have the best uh, goals against for a, a starting goalie. Hmm. What about the best rookie four points this year? It is Doug Pogge, 54 points, and then Trevor Parent and Dallas Chan. Okay. Let's take a look at those team stats just to see what we did well at, and then we'll take a look at who we're up against in round one, but I don't know if this team is going to win the playoffs at all. Like, we could just go on a tear like we did last year and get to that conference finals, but who knows. So in terms of the entire NHL, we finished 13th best with a 41-32-9 record. Goals, against, our goals four per game, 
We were one of the worst offensive teams in the league. We were the third worst offensive team, and we made the playoffs. So yeah, our offense definitely needs to be a bit better. But luckily for us, we have one of the best goals against in the entire NHL at fifth place. So we're just a really good defensive team, even though Larson was a minus like 18 or 17 or whatever it was. It's just our team is not scoring enough goals since losing guys like Svechnikov and whatnot. So we need to figure out our scoring for next season, I would say, at least. Power play percentage, we had an okay power play, but it was still near the bottom, 19.3%. And our penalty kill at 81.9% is one of the best in the NHL. So we're a good defensive team, not a good offensive one. And we struggled going into the playoffs, which is not really a good sign. We were better on the road than we were on home ice as well. Okay, so who are we taking on in round one? Hopefully it's a team we could beat. Please be a team we could beat. And that is going to be the Ottawa Senators. Oh, no. Oh, no. Since we're like the last seed technically, I think, in the Eastern Conference or in our division, we're taking on a 50-24-8 winning Ottawa Senators who went 9-0-1 in our last 10. Well, we struggled in our last 10. My God, this is going to be a probably... We're probably going to get swept somehow, even though we uh, made it to the Conference Finals last year. Let's take a look at how Ottawa did by comparison to us during the season. So they finished with a <laughs> 17 more points than us, which is a quite a bit. They had 9 more regulation wins than us as well. Goals 4 per game, they scored 3.63 goals 4 per game, which is way more than us. They scored actually 66 more goals than us in the regular season. Goals against wise, they were better than us defensively as well, actually allowing 10 less goals. Power play percentage wise, they were better than us by 6%. And then defensively on the penalty kill, they were better than us by 7% almost. So Ottawa in general is just all around a way better team than us. And I am very scared to see what their lineups look like. Let's take a look at their roster. And then I'll be it for this episode because this episode's already pretty long. So here is their forward core. They have Anthony Bolton who's been with them for quite a long time already at his young age of 24. And he's been a pretty solid producer for his career they also got Philippe Couture or Couture who's been also with them for a while even though he's only 25 and then they also have Hunter Burrard this is a really young and good team it looks like that top line in general is really young second line they have Emmanuel Boussier who was originally drafted by the Blues they have our former player in Ryan Suzuki who somehow made it up to an 84 since leaving us as well and has put up some pretty solid numbers uh, they also have Gordy Gormley, who was drafted 6 overall by the Dallas Stars. Third line, Arthur Kaliev. They also have Ken Blacker and Col Colin Walton. And then fourth line, Hunter Mestre, Michael Rasmussen, uh, one of our former players as well from way back in year number one at least. Yeah, year number one to three. And they also have Marcel Lapierre. So overall wise, they don't really have, I would say, a deep forward core, but they do have a good forward core, and it is a very young team as well, so that's going to be interesting to play that. And then defensively, they have Andre Yager, interesting, with Eric Brandstrom, so Eric Brandstrom still there. And then they have Pekka Salo with Lubomir Simic, and top six wise, they have Jalen Murphy and Stanislav Gogolev. Hmm. Yeah, this is a really interesting team. A lot of young guys in their lineup. And in goalie-wise, they have our former goalie that I was just looking at in Isaiah Curtis, who had a pretty good regular season. So he is their starting goalie. And they also have Torsten Oland, who is their backup goaltender. Depth-wise, they have actually two big injuries. Okay, to Magnus Nicholson, who's a 22-year-old elite defenseman, and Philip Tomasino. Hmm. So when Tomasino comes back, yeah, this team gets even more scary. Yikes, I don't know when they're going to return, but Tomasino would make this forward core a lot better even when he comes back. And then that 87 defenseman would make this defensive core even better, like Murphy would come into the lineup, I think. Yikes, hopefully those guys are out long term. We'll actually quickly check that before we end the episode because I'm kind of curious on how long term they're injured for. Hopefully they're missing the entire uh, series because I really would like to get on to the next round again, but that might not happen. Uh, so Nicholas is back on April 19th, so he will be back for the series, and Thomasino's back on the 26th, so they both might be back 
Let me actually take a look at the calendar. So the 19th and the 26th. Um, the 26th is not in this round, so Tomasino won't be back in that Nicholas defenseman would be back for a game six, maybe a, or maybe a game six, but definitely a game seven situation. So, anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of our Detroit Red Wings franchise mode. So, in next episode, we will take on the Ottawa Senators in the first round of the playoffs as we look to win our first round matchup. So, let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll see you guys next time.